What's up guys, Widge the Wiz here. Uh, today I have an unfortunate topic to bring to the table, but one that, you know, deserves to, some recognition and deserves to be talked about. So as you know, I have been uh, rebuilding this bike. I purchased it uh, at the beginning of 2021 and it was wrecked when it came to me and I've been rebuilding it and hopefully you've been following along with that build series. If you not, have not, go ahead and check that out um, on my channel. Uh, but unfortunately, uh, Murphy's Law seems to have struck me in the butt. Um, you know, I had just finished essentially rebuilding this bike and doing all the modifications that I had wanted to do to it, but I went out and I took it on the track and it was a rainy day in May, and the bike uh, and I went down. The, it was very unfortunate, um, but I figured that since I've been doing all of these modifications to my bike that um, in part have to do with uh, crash protection, we might as well get a good review out of them, and I'll talk about uh, you know, how they held up and it, would I buy them again. All right, so first off, when you think crash protection, you're gonna go straight to frame sliders. Well, I installed a set of PSR frame sliders that I got, I believe, off of Revzilla onto this bike, and uh, I was actually really surprised with how they held up. Um, they did their job. Um, it was a low side crash on the track. I was going too fast into a corner and just had a little bit too much lean angle. Um, so when the bike went down, it was doing about I would say 35 to 45 miles per hour slid across the concrete and while the frame slider did break down and get ground, I shouldn't say break down, but while the frame slider was ground down, um, it did a really good job of protecting the bike's fairings and overall the, uh, and overall the, the frame of the bike as well. Honestly, I would get these again, but I think that if you would plan on putting your bike down on the track and doing some serious track time, I would suggest ones that you don't have to replace the entire uh, unit. So maybe Woodcrafts would be more, would be a better choice for you. I think I'm going to go with Woodcrafts next time. All right, so. When I purchased this bike, uh, it had already been in a couple of crashes. Uh, low sides is what, is what it looked like on the street. Um, so I had to replace the fairings. Uh, so I ordered a set of Chinese fairings um, straight from China. They took a couple of months to get here. Um, but they held up pretty well. Honestly, wasn't expecting too much out of them other than just looking good. Wasn't expecting any protection. Um, I'm not going to buy new ones uh, because I had some serious fitment issues with these. But at the end of the day, I'm going to cover them up with some stickers and we're just going to call this good. Now, one of the most important parts of racing is having good rear sets. And what I did was I purchased a set of no name brand uh, alum uh, cast aluminum rear sets that were somewhat adjustable. Uh, these surprisingly, I thought if anything was going to fail, it would be these. Uh, but they took the brunt of the fall, they slid across the track, and the bike did a rotation as it was uh, sliding. Uh, but it did very well, they held up, and I would probably get these again. Uh, because the Woodcrafts are way too expensive. I think I got these for about $100 um, and they've worked fine. I would get them again. One note is if you use these particular Chinese rear sets, I'll see if I can find them on eBay and put them in the, uh, put them in the description. Uh, use red Loctite. They have fallen apart on me uh, while I was riding casually, but ever since I used Loctite and torqued down the bolts, um, they did great. 
Uh, let's see, one other note, when the bike went down, uh, I had a set of Vortex racing levers. Uh, my brake lever completely broke off, um, but I think that was actually a blessing in disguise. Uh, if it had been the steel one, it could have really bent and ruined the uh, clip-on where, uh, where it mounts. So I'm simply gonna replace that one in this video today and get back to riding. Overall, the bike is still rideable. It still runs. It does great. Um, I think it's been a great, great street and slash track bike. All right. Now you might be asking yourself, well, Wiz, you've talked so much about the bike and how it did when it went down on the track, but how did you do? Well, I'll answer it. I'm doing just fine. Uh, after the crash, I immediately got up and walked away. Honestly, I've fallen harder on a snowboard. Um, and you may be asking yourself, well, didn't you say the bike went down at 35 to 45 miles per hour? That would mean that you did as well. And to that, I would say, you're right. I cannot say enough about my Denizi racing suit. I mean, I went down, it's got some padding in it, um, not so much, but I just slid across the track and gently came to a stop. I rolled a couple of times, and honestly, the next day, all I woke up with was a little bit of a sore neck. So if there was one thing that I would do to improve uh, the overall survivability of a, of a crash on a track is I would get a Hans device, uh, a device that helps keep your neck supported and prevents you from getting whiplash. Luckily, my head did not hit the ground, so I don't have to replace my helmet. Um, so that was really good. All right, well, enough about my bike and my racing suit. Let's go ahead and install my new brake lever and get back to riding.